Okay, the call is now being recorded. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echa. Love Yahuwah with your whole heart, with your being and all of your strength. Love your brother as you love yourself. You are blessed when you go out. Blessed when you come in yahuwah will be with you all the days of your life oh shema israel yahuwah eloheinu Yahuwah Echa Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you know yeah. that 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 Shema is so powerful and it is. Spirit, not only that is spiritual, you know, it's it's when our sister is singing, mm -hmm. if if you are in tune with the spirit of Abba, it, it, it connects you directly to the Ruach of Abba, you know, because Shema came directly from Abba, spoken out by Moshe, our Rabbi. So it is really, really deep meaning and it's spiritual. I always love to hear it myself too in the morning, even though I don't. Uh, this is how I put, we put it in the morning. Shema Israel. That's how I say it. Yahuwah Eloheinu. Yahuwah Eha. That's it. Okay, good. Bravo, bravo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like the version. Yeah. <laughs> So I share my, I, I always share my every morning. I mm. love it so much. I, it really, really bring down the mm -hmm. presence of Abba. Anytime we share my, it bring down the presence of Abba, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, yes, yes. We really thank you, our sister, for this um, uh, music. Uh, as usual, we know we cannot go into this terror without inviting the presence of Abba in our midst. So we want Abba to, uh, he has been with us. We still just want to invite him to, we still want to invite him, his presence um, in our midst so that we'll be able to understand more perfectly the Torah and, and uh, what actually the message Abba is conveying to us through this Torah portion. So, Brother Anderson, can you please pray for us? Okay. Abba Father, Creator, Yeshua HaMashiach, we give thanks for your creation. We give thanks okay. for the spirit in which you have given unto your creation, those who have received thee as their Savior, praying that you will Continue to be a savior unto life and to the souls and the minds and the hearts of those people and we look unto thee to be a savior. Be gracious and merciful unto us as we look for your mercy to endure forever. Praying as we have fellowship one with another that thy presence and the power of your might and your spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding will be in the midst. We just give thanks for being a provider, providing our needs according to your riches and your glory. And praying for those that are not present here that their spirit may forevermore receive the word in which will be given this day. And we just give thanks and honor to thee for all these blessings, and I pray thee things, Almighty Creator, Yeshua HaMashiach, and thy holy and righteous names I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. We thank Abba 
for today uh being the first day of the week um and today also is the conclusion of uh, the um the the bearer sheet the conclusion of the bearer sheet once again i welcome you all to this torah portion the conclusion of this torah portion and i'm i'm, I'm I know very well that we are Baruch with this um, Torah portion. We are Baruch with uh, the book of Genesis, um, which is Bereshit. We thank Abba. We are richly blessed. You know, we are rich, richly uh, Baruch, you know, from this, uh, the book of Bereshit. And um, we, are going to conclude our Torah portion now and um, next uh, Sabbat, we move further to uh, uh, the book of Exodus. Um, we remember that our Torah portion this week that we studied yesterday was Vayehi and Hili. Vayehi and he leave and i'm sure we are originally baruch you know of yesterday as we study the torah portion and yaakob lee yaakob lee in the land of Israel, 17 years so that the total years of Yaakov life were 147 years. That was the total years that Yaakov lived. And as we have said yesterday, I just want to recap our study yesterday. Uh, Yaakov lived, and that is actually the final um, Shabbat reading from the book of Bereshit. As I have said last week, Yosef revealed his identity to his brothers and he invited them, as well as his father, to live in Misraim, that we wrongly call Egypt, in order to provide for them during the famine. Yosef, his brother, his father, were joyfully reconciled they are joyfully reunited first they are joyfully reunited and they were reconciled and we have seen how yaku uh, actually uh, lived in the the land that was not his but Abba had made promise that Abba has had revealed to Abraham that his seed will live in the foreign land that is not theirs. So Yaakov was the fulfillment of that of that promise that was made, or of that revelation that was made because he moved, and when his children came back to him to to inform him of the fact that they have reunited with Yosef, that Yosef was the governor, was the, uh, the, 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 the executive director in the land of Misraim, a kind of prime minister in the land of uh, Misraim. He was, initially he didn't believe them, but when they continually saying this, his spirit revived and said, enough is enough. And finally, he decided to go to um, Misraim. And before he went to Misraim, he went to Bethlehem to praise Abba, to give offering to Abba, to acknowledge Abba. He put Abba first. He did not just because of that need, you know, get up and go to Misraim. You know, 
he went to Bethlehem first to, to seek the face of Abba, to consult Abba, to pray to Abba. And what happened? Abba told him that, Yaakub, Yaakub. And he said, here yeah, I am. Go. I'm going to go with you. I will go ahead of you. I will be with you. So Yaakub eventually entered Misraim with his household. And they were taken to Pharaoh, where Pharaoh was asking him question, how old are you and all that? What is your business and what you do? Which Yahoo actually told Pharaoh his age and the trials and tribulations that accompany that age. And we are told that he left the presence of Pharaoh back to the land of Goshen. And we must also remember that the best of the land was given to the children of Israel, which foreshadow the new Jerusalem, which foreshadow the land of Israel that Abba promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Yahaku. The best of the land, the land of Israel is the best of the land. So they were they dwell in, in Gush, Gushet, the best of the land in Misraim. Even the Misraim did not dwell in that land. That land was reserved for the children of Israel and his house, and, and, and all of them came to the land of Misraim. And at the end of his life, Yaakub praised Yahuwah for his exceedingly abundant goodness, despite having experienced many difficulties and trials. He gave, he gave praises to Abba. He never dwelled on the circumstances. He never dwelled on whatever experience and difficulties, many difficulties and trials that he encountered. He gave thanks to Abba. Let us emulate Yaakov from this, that we must learn how to give thanks to Abba. Esteem belongs to Allahim, whose power is at work in us. By this power, he can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. See, esteem belongs to Allahim, who his power is at work in us. His power, the power of Allahim, is at work in us. And by his power, we can infinitely more than we can ask of by the power that is in us we can we can ask more more than what we even can imagine and we saw how yaku baruch his grandson ephraim and manashe and how in the surprise mood he put his right hand on Ephraim, who was the younger, and his left on Manashe, who was the firstborn, and should have rightfully received uh, primary blessings. We explained that yesterday to us why he did that. So he blessed them that they say, by you, Israel will be blessed, saying, May Allahim make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus he said, we saw how he said Ephraim before Manasseh. Ephraim became Israel. Ephraim became Yaakov. 
he said Ephraim before Manasseh. And I've said, as I said yesterday, we have this pattern of behavior from Abraham, his grandfather, who said Yisak before Ishmael. Of a short, I'm going to bless, but this is from Yahuwah. I'm going to Baruch, Barak, Ishmael, but in Isaac, in Yisak, your name is going to be, you know, pronounced. And Yaakov said, may Yahweh make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. And we saw how um, Yaakov actually Baruch his children, the 12th children of his, the 12th tribe of Israel, that translated to the 12th tribe of Israel. And in 49, we saw how Yaakub called his sons and he said, come together that I may tell you what is befalling you. Whenever we study the Torah, whenever we go into the word of Abba, Abba is calling us to himself. Abba wants us to get very close to him so that we will learn his way. We will know his way. We will understand his righteousness, his right rulings. So the same thing Yaakov said, my children come together that I may tell you what will befall you in the end of days. Assemble and listen, O oh, son of Yaakov, and listen to Israel, Yaakov, your father. And we saw that Yaakov did not only bless his grandsons, which is Ephraim and Manasseh, he also called his children to get together, his sons together, to, to Baruch them and to prophesy over them in his dead bed. And we have said that this custom is ancient. We have said also that we are the inheritor of these customs. Even though when we were taken as a slave, we were colonized by the colonial power. Okay. Our, the portion of us that are here was stripped of their culture of their background but i still i think i had a, a very close relationship family with uh a lot of family my, my brothers and sisters who are african americans and we share the same experience because that is the first thing i did when i came to america in the 80s i, I started to understand to get to know you know my people to to for me to be able to get to to get close to them. And I discovered that majority of our, you know, old generation also, you know, baruch their children. But this is common in Africa. So we are the inheritor of that rich heritage to bless your children when you are at your deathbed at a very old age to tell them of what is going to happen to them in future. So, and we have seen that is what Yaakub did. He blessed his children and he revealed what is going to happen to them. And we saw the blessings were carefully constructed and appropriate to the individual. He is carefully constructed the, the blessing and appropriate that blessing to individual according to their characters, you know, their behaviors and outright blessings to those who um, did not have. But then the, the very prominent um, of his children, that is um, Reuben, Simeon, Lou, and Yehuda, we saw that Yaakub reacted 
you know, he reacted the way he uh, Nabu to their lives. We, we saw what he said to Ruben, how what he said to Ruben. He said, Ruben, you are my firstborn, my power, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of exhortation. And the excellencies of power, unstable as warriors. He resisted Reuben because Reuben attempted coup in his family. Not, it's not just about sexual, it's about power because he was still alive. Reuben wanted to take over the headship, he wanted to take over the. Um, the, the inheritance of a first son, you know, in a very violent manner by sleeping with his father's wife. Even though in Africa it is acceptable, it is acceptable in the sense that you can only do that when the man is dead, not while the man is alive. You can't do that while the man is alive, but you can do that while the man is dead so that that woman uh I, I think my sister was referring stabola was saying that yesterday so that you will not have um a widower you will not have a woman without protection so they make sure that the, that woman is protected when her, either when her husband is dead or something happened that woman is going to be protected that woman is going to be provided for. That woman will have a hooper over her head. But in this case, Reuben exercised power. Uh, he was, he lost it after his father's uh, wife, which Yaakub resisted and his pronouncement showed that he was not happy with Reuben and he resisted him. It, it took the grace of Abba and the intervention of Moshe, who prayed for Reuben. Reuben would have completely wiped out. But at the same time, Yaakov demonstrated by, you know, when he was rubbing his hand ahead on, on um, Ephraim, what, is, what he was doing at that time, the symbolism of that, was to wreck completely power away from Reuben, not to give him, to take away from him. You know, the inheritance that's supposed to have, that belongs to him. You know, Reuben supposed to inherit the land of Israel as a first son. And we have seen that even in our culture, when, when a father die, the first son will take over. And that is why we say that we are the Asian people. We we are the Asian people. So Yaakov did that. The same thing he went further when it was the turn of Shemon and Liu. He combined both of them together. So I sincerely believe that they 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 are twins. I, I really believe that they are twins. Because he said they are brothers. He's supposed to have separated them. And I've seen that with my own in my own family. I know that my, my twins, they work together. It's difficult for you to see, you know, to, for you to um how would it for you to separate them. They 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 have uh, when when they take decision, it's both of them. What you hear from A is what you hear from B. So Jacob combined Simeon and Leo together. And what did he say to them? You are brothers. Their weapons are implements of violence. Their weapons, implement of violence. Let my being not enter their council. My being, you know, that was so powerful. Let my being, let my, let my spirit has nothing to do with them. That's what he was saying. 
Let my essence not dwell in their council. That was Yaakov was saying. Because they slew a man in their displeasure. Why would he do that? Because even though what they did was actually um, their anger was a fitting response, but it was a righteous and it was it was not a righteous anger. It was a fitting response for what you know the session son did to dinner their sister by raping her. Rape is nothing but exercising of of power over you know a weak woman. And that's what they did. It was fitting, but it was wrong. Because one, they did not consult their father. And even if their father, they, they, perhaps they must, they, they must have been expecting their father to act. We, he did not do anything. So they have to take the ball, the ball by the horn. And that is what they did. But Yaakov was displeased with their actions because I think they violated the Torah there. They violated the covenant of Abba. So when you tell a man, I mean, you don't use the word of Abba to lie. I think that is what actually got Yaakub anger. Because they use the word of Abba to lie. You circumcised. That was too deep. That was the covenant that was made with their grandfather. So he, they shouldn't have done that. But they did it anyway. So Yaakov did not say anything. He reserved his judgment. He reserved his judgment to when he was dying. So that whatever he say is going to be irreversible. That's what he did to them. So he said their anger. He caused their anger. It caused their anger because it was fierce and their rod for it was cruel. And he said, I will divide them in Yahaku and in Israel. I will scatter them. My sister said yesterday, yes, they were scattered. They still they are still giving service in the house of um uh, Israel. Uh, yeah, Simeon was not pronounced, but that of Lou was pronounced because he was actually being ordained. Whatever his father said, Lou was ordained from Shamayim to be Kohenim to Abba. That is why when um, his mama got him, she said, I, he, I joined. That simply means that now my husband will join himself to me so Liu, being a servant of abba we join himself to abba we carry out the service of abba in this case even though they were scattered which abba honored that but abba never withdrew the function of his office from him what abba did was to honor what Yah could say that they are going to be scattered in Israel, and but that his office was retained. So, and we are going to go into uh, after that. Yaakub now proclaim Yahuda, the leader of the tribe of Israel. I think I was reading, I don't know if it is um, Yuvele or Yasa. When Yaakub returned from Padal Aram, whenever, and their grandfather was alive, that was, yes, uh, Abraham was alive at the time he came back. So 
Jacob will take um, Yehuda and leave her to Abraham. And Abraham will start telling them, he will start praying for them. He, 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 he told them of their, what they are, the role they are going to play, even when they are very young. He told them. So, I think it was Yuveli who really explained that aspect very well. That Yehuda was ordained to be the leader of Israel. Now, if you look at, if you read the book of Yasav very well, Yehuda, they fought wars, just like Israel fought war before they conquered, they entered to the promised land. They fought so many wars. The, 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 the children of uh, Yaku and Yahuda was always the leader of that military battle. I think Yasa said Abba gave him and uh, Simeon and Liu a special gift that when they shout, when they make noise, the building will collapse. When they make noise, when, when, when the battle, you know, got to a point where Yahuda or Simeon or Lua, you know, cried that that building, that wall, like the wall of uh, Jericho, that building will fall down. I think it was the book of Yasa. So Abba endowed them with that gift. And he demonstrated that when um, he was in, in Misraim, when Yosef was trying to, you know, um, trying to actually question them. He got so angry when he was defending his brother that, listen, um, Benjamin will go back with us. If you don't allow Benjamin to go back with us, I'm going to pull down the Mizraim. I'm going to destroy you. So his anger, it, you know, the Ruach, just like Samson, Samson the Ruach of, of Abba fell on him until when Manasseh went to him and touched him. So it was there he identified, oh no, this boy is our DNA, even though he doesn't understand. He's from the house of Israel. So, and you see the role that he played when he, he, his father, and you have to go back to history also, don't forget that Abba specifically, you know, compensated Leah because she was unloved. But then, not only that she was a courageous woman, she was a woman that gave all to Abba. He, she devoted everything to her husband, even though when her husband did not love her, she never wavered. So when 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 Yahuda came, he gave praises. She gave praises to Abba. She thanked Abba. And when, if you look at the Hebrew letter, all the four words of you know Abba, the four letters, all the four letters are in Yahuda and Dalit. Dalet was the door. I mean, the door. That's the mean the, the Dalet. So we have to concentrate on the, on the, on the Yehuda because he became the leader of the house of Israel, and his, he, he, and and also you have, if you look at it very well, it was only Yehuda he called my son. So let's read um, Bereshit 49. Let's read Bereshit 49 again. So Sister Shadola, you are going to read from verse one. How many, okay, study three. You are going to read from verse 1 to um, 13. 
Brother Anderson, you are going to read from 14 uh, to 25. Sister Bola, you are going to read from 25 to the end. We are going to dwell briefly on Yahuda, the leader of the tribe, the leader of the nation of Israel. And why was he became the leader? He became the leader because from his tribe, Mashiach will come out. So you can go ahead and read. And Yaakov called his son. Which chapter? I'm sorry. 49. 49. Okay. Go ahead. And Yaakov called his sons and said, Gather together, so that I declare to you what is to befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear, you sons of Yaakov, and listen to Israel, your father. Rovan, you are my firstborn, my power, at the beginning of my strength, the excellency of exaltation and the excellency of power unstable as the waters you do not excel because you went up to your father's bed then you defiled it he went up to my couch shimeon and louis are brothers their weapons are implements of violence let my being not enter their council let my esteem not be united to their assembly because they slew a man in their displeasure and they lamed an ox in pleasure. Cursed be their displeasure for it is fierce and their wrath for it is cruel. I divide them in Yaakov and scatter them in Israel. You, Yauda, your brothers praise you. Your hand is on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children bow down before you. Yauda is a lion's cub. From the prey you have gone up, my son. He bowed down. He crouched like a lion and like a lion who rouses him. The skeptor shall not turn aside from Yauda, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him is the obedience of peoples, binding his donkey to the vine and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth whiter than milk. Zavulan dwells at the seashores. He is a haven for ships, and his border is unto Zidon. Yes. Anderson? Um, <clears throat> Fourteen. Yes, yes, hello. 14. Yes, yes, fourteen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you. Yes. This car is strong. It's crouching down between the two burdens. And he saw the rest is good and he and the land that is what's pleasant. And he bowed his shoulder to bear and became the servants unto tribune. Dan shall be the judge of his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that biteth the horse's heel, so that the rider shall fall backwards. I have waited for the salvation of Yehuda. Glad a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome it at last. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield up a royal dignity. Nathaniel is a hide 
less loose. He giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful brow, even a fruitful brow by the well, whose branches run over the wall. The arches have sorely grieved him and shooted at him and hate him, but his bow abide in strength and his arm of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty Elohim of Jacob. For hence is the, the shepherd at the stone of Israel. But the bow and the strength and the arm of his hands were made strong by the hands of his mighty Elohim of Yaakov. And hence the, the, the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by Elohim of thy father who shall help thee, and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above, blessing of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the beasts and of the womb. Sister Bola 25, I mean 26. To the end. The blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors. Up to the limit of the everlasting hills, they are on the head of Yusuf and on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brothers. Binyami is a wolf that tears in the morning. He eats prey and at night he divides the spoil. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father spoke to them. And he blessed them. He blessed each one according to his own blessing. And he commanded them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Etite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Etite, as a possession for a burial site. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rivka, his wife. And there I buried Leah, the field for cheese and the cave, which is, a, is in it, from the sons of Etai. And when Yaakov tended commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Amen. Hallelujah. So we don't know we don't know where the the the, the Christian get the ideas of heaven. He said he gathered together, you know, to his fathers. Now let's look at Yehuda, the leader of the tribes of Israel. You will discover that Yaakub. Baruch Yehuda, and he prophesies, you know, about the coming Messiah when he was given blessings to Yehuda. Now, he said, Yehuda, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemy. Your father's children shall bow down before you. He trusts the leadership right in there on his lap. Your father's children, they shall bow down. You will become ruler over them. The authority of the house of Israel is going to be in your hand and all your brothers 
they will come to bow down before you. When the people of Israel came out of slavery in, in Misraim, Yehuda became Alahim Kodesh once. When Israel, that was that is Psalm 114, 1 to 2. Sister Shadula, can you read Psalm 114, 1 to 2, please? Psalm 114. You say Psalm 114? Yes, ma'am. Verse 1 to 2. Okay. When Israel went out of Mitzrayim, the house of Yaakov from a people of strange language, Yahudah became his Kodasha and Israel his rule. See, he set aside Yahuda. Not only a political leader, but also a spiritual leader. He set him as he set him apart because out of the tribe of Yahuda, the one that is going to save Israel and 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 judge the whole world will come. So Yahuda was set aside, Yahuda was separated. Yahuda was Kodesh for the great assignment that is ahead of him. Yahuda is a lion cub. From the prayer you have gone up, what is the meaning of a cub? The meaning of a cub simply means young lion or a young person. Yahuda was a cub, a young lion, a young person. From the prey you have gone up, my son, he bowed down, he crouched like a lion, and like a lion who arouses, who will, who arouses him. Yeah, uh, um, Yaakov used language. He uses language to 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 describe Yahuda. The role that Yahuda is going to play. And Yaakov said, "The scepter shall not turn aside from Yahuda." nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes and to him is the obedient of peoples. Let us examine the scepter. What is the scepter? We have to look at the spiritual meaning of it. But we have to also define what is the word scepter. It means a rod, a staff. And usually indicate authority. Usually indicate power. See, when, my, when Sister Bola was talking yesterday, you have to see the, the when you go to the Yoruba land in Nigeria, you will understand what a scepter mean, the rod. Almost all the kings, all the kings in Yoruba land do have the scepter. They have the rod. You can see it with them. They walk with that rod majestically. That is the symbol of authority. So that really Make me to believe completely that majority of the Yoruba, if they are, if 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 it's not all, are from the tribe of Yahuda. 
because they call them um uh in yoruba language it's called omalade that is to so that the children of of the owner of the crown so they walk majestically it in fact it was this Torah portion that made me to understand very well because I'm from a royal home. See, when a king died, when a king died, the first thing they will look for when he died immediately, immediately is to take the crown and to take the, the rod, the scepter away from him. They will take it and they will go and hide it so that it will not be stolen or forced into the hands of a character. So they will wait until they, you know, install another king. So this Sura Posho actually let me really understand. They exercise that power because I was just thinking, he said, the scepter is a rod or means used by sovereign as a symbol of royal authority. In Hebrew, it's called shahit or shabit, shahit or shahit. That was what it's called in Hebrew. S H E B H E T. Capital T. In Hebrew. So that rod is a symbol of authority. Is a power. Without the rod, you cannot rule. You remember that Yahuda had actually been demonstrating that he was a royal when he met Tamar. Tamar, we remember that story. When Tamar said, Give me the symbol of your authority, he removed the seal in his hand, he removed the seal and the staff, the staff, that rod, that is what that staff in his hand, and gave it to that woman. So is something that is so, it, it was so is so powerful. The scepter shall not shall not turn aside from Yahuda. That is to, to say that the rod. And what is the rod? What is the symbolism of the rod? Now, it makes me to understand. In, in 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 our language when they refer to the king as um they will call him iku iku baba iku simply mean dead ye ye simply mean life that means that the king has authority he has power absolute power over death and life and that is the truth and they exercise that power in those days when they point they used to have the rod in their hand when they point that rod to you either for good or for evil if it is for evil if they point that rod to you they point it to you and they will not even make a pronouncement when they point that rod to you either they send you to jail or they, they will be killed so the 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 most prominent over the Alafi of Oyo used to be called Iku Baba Ye Ye. That is, the, the Iku simply means the one that has authority and life. They can determine you to live or to, to die. That's just the meaning of it. So that is the symbol of that authority. Now, let's look at the spiritual meaning of scepter. The royal owner, the meaning of it, this, this spiritual meaning is this. The royal owner literally held in his hand the key of life and death. 
That is spiritual meaning of it. Just like Yahusha Hamashiach has the power over life and death. His was the last word, and holding the scepter signified that his authority was absolute. When they are in council, traditional council, the king will allow you, allow everybody to say whatever they want to say. But when he makes the pronouncement, that is it. It cannot be changed. Just like during the, um, I think in, 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 when the, the children of Israel were taken to Israel, and it was decreed, you know, that Daniel should be, you know, don't in the in in the lions of uh, in the lions there it was decreed the authority came out and they said that once the 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 king seal it with his ring nothing can change it that ring represents also the rod if not because yahuwah intervened for daniel he would have been dead that is your that is that is the meaning of the rod. The, the verse below use the word scepter to represent the power that Allahim has given to his son Yahusha Hamashiach. He promised that all who approach him in belief, he will receive. Yahuwah has given Yahusha Hamashiach the rod of righteousness. And we are going to also look at the meaning of that rod spiritually. What does it signify? What does it mean spiritually? Let's read um let's read, let's see um Genesis 40:10. What it turns Genesis forty ten. Yes. And in the vine were three branches, and it was a and it was as though it budded. It is blossoms short forth. And its cluster brought forth ripe grapes. Now, this is when the chief court bearer was relating his dream to Yosef. And he was telling him what he saw in that dream. See, that, that simply represents the, 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 the rod of authority. And that simply shows that the, the court bearer, okay, will go back to his function to give Pharaoh, to perform his role as what he used to do. Now let's read Numbers 24, 17. Numbers 24, 17. Bemiba twenty four seventeen. I when you see, find me, please read. I see him, but not now. I observe him, but not near. A star shall come out of Yaakov and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and shall destroy all the sons of Shape. Hallelujah. You see it? You see a scepter shall arise out of Israel and the rod can be a rod of judgment. 
as I've explained, that the rod, you know, perform two functions to judge and to bless, to barack, to spare, to save life. Now here, Dylan was prophesying about the coming Yahusha. And he said, I see him, but not now. I observe him, but not, not near. A, sh a star shall come out of Yaakov. You see, and you, you compare that with the, the, the Nebim. I mean, Nebua of, of uh, Yaakov to Yehuda. A star shall come out of Yaakov. Ya and his scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corner of Moab, shall judge all the corner of Moab, he shall judge the whole world and shall destroy all the sons of Seth. He will destroy all the workers of iniquity. He will destroy those who break the commandment, the Torah of Abba. He will destroy the lawless one. He's coming with the rod of authority. Let's read Psalm 45. Psalm 45, verse 6. Psalm 45, verse 6. I'm giving us this what is spiritual meaning of scepter. Scepter. <laughs> Psalm 45 verse 6, your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever, the scepter of your reign, the scepter of straightness. Hallelujah. I remember we used to sing, your throne, O Yahweh, is forever, <laughs> the scepter of, I, didn't, I think I remember that song very well. The scepter of righteousness. What is that? Can you please read that again for me, man? Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. The scepter of your reign is a scepter of straightness. Hallelujah. Amen. Your throne is forever. The throne of Abba is forever. Ever. And the scepter is that of righteousness and is everlasting. Your throne, O Allahim, is forever and ever. The scepter of your reign is the scepter of straightness. You have loved righteousness and you hated wickedness. Therefore, Elohim, your Elohim, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companion. That is Yahusha Hamashiach. What is the scepter of, of his reign? What is that scepter? It's the Torah. Yahusha will judge the world. With the Torah, the scepter of righteousness in his hand, he's going to pronounce judgment on the world. And that scepter is that of righteousness. What is righteousness? Torah. When we do the commandment, Moshe told us in Debarim 6 25. When you do all this, you, when you do his commandments, it's counted as righteousness. The righteousness of Abba is obeying and guiding the commandment of Abba. So, Yehuda was given that portion to guide, to defend, to teach the commandment of Abba. And that is why it was it, it stated that he was when he came out 
of the land of Misraim. He was set apart. He was set apart. When Israel came forth out of Misraim, the house of Yaakub from a people of strange language, Yehuda became his sanctuary. Kadosh. Israel, his dominion. Memshala. His dominion. He set aside Yahuda. Why did he set aside Yahuda? Why did he, he Yahuwah, Kadosh Yahuda? Because out of Yahuda, Yahusha is coming. So he set him aside for him to be able to carry out the responsibility. He gave him the authority to, to be the ruler in Israel, to be an absolute ruler in Israel. And we saw that. See? It was given to Shaul. But unfortunately, Shaul does not know how to obey Abba. So the kingdom was snatched away, was taken away from him, and it was properly restored back to the house of Yahuda. And we saw that the man who was the first to mount the throne of Yahuda was Dawood. And he was a man that held in his hand the scepter of righteousness that made Abba to say he was a man after my heart. Why did Abba say that? Because the wood guided the commandment of Abba. He wasn't perfect. Let us understand that. But he never allowed his imperfection to obstruct the way of Abba in his life. He never allowed his shortcomings to define him. He picked it up where he left it to continue the way of Abba because the scepter of righteousness is in his hand. He was both a spiritual leader and a political leader. He fought the war on behalf of Israel. He was a Nabim that, that Dawood or Dauda was a Nabim. Just that like the same combination that Yahusha Hamashiach combined when he comes. That's our high Kohenim, Kohenim Hagadol. Yahusha is going to be, Yahusha is our high, is our, is our Kohenim Hagadol, our high priest. Your throne, Yahwa, is forever, and the scepter is that of righteousness. Let's read Isaiah 14, 5. Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah 14, 5. If you find it, please read. Yahuwah has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. Hallelujah. The scepter of what? The, the, Yahuwah has broken, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Yahuwah has broken the staff of the wicked, the yes. scepter of the rulers. You see, he has broken, that is to say that he has destroyed the authority of the rulers, the wicked rulers. As I said, the scepter is for righteousness and is for judgment. It performs two functions. Is to give life and is to take life. 
And when Yahusha comes, all those who are not guiding the Torah are going to be judged with that rod. There will be no correction. It's going to use that rod to judge the world and those who did not work in accordance with the Torah of Abba. Let's read the, book, the Hebrew, the book of Hebrew, 1, 8 to 9. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. Hebrew 1, 8 to 9. 8 to 9. Yes. You said Hebrew 1? Yes. 8, verse 8 to 9. But to the Son, he says, Your truth, yes. O Elohim. Is forever and ever. Hallelujah. A scepter of straightness is the scepter of your reign. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Because of this, Elohim, your Elohim has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companion. It's Do you tonight. hear that? That is Yahusha. And what is that rod is about? Is of righteousness. The rod is the rod of righteousness, and that is the Torah of Abba, the commandment of Abba. We are to keep we are from a royal home remember pira said that we belong to the royalty i'm not talking of this nonsense the worldly royalty that that full of scandals and evil i'm talking of the house of yahuda you see the royalty of the Yorubas were corrupted, has Satan ejected. He took that away from them and gave them fake and fraud. Because they worship deities. They don't give the Torah the command. They have no idea what the commandment of God, even though they possess the, the scepter. They possess the scepter. But they don't know what it meant. They know it's life and dead. But the righteousness of it was completely lost and taken away from them. Can, can someone read Psalm 125 for me? Psalm 125, verse 3. For the scepter, Psalm 125 verse 3, yes. For the scepter of wrongness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch forth their hands to righteousness. Hallelujah. You see, it said, for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. The rod of wickedness. The rod of wickedness shall not rest. On the land that is allotted to the righteous one. Those who 
guided the commandment of Abba. They will not have, the wicked one will not have portion in the land that was allotted to them. It simply means that when Yahusha comes, the wicked one will not have, will not be allowed into the land of Israel. Yahusha is coming to destroy every, everything that is in the land of Israel and purify it so that the wicked will not enter into that land. Just like when Abba was telling them that when you get to the land of Israel, you must wipe out the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Perishites, the seven nations come back. You must clean them. You must clear them completely because they have polluted my land. What is happening in the land of Israel today? The land of Israel is being polluted. The land of Israel is being occupied by the Gentiles. You have all kinds of wickedness in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv, in all the land of Israel. Unfortunately, I weep when you saw the gay men, the 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 the, the um LTG B marching in the land of Abba. He said, for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Let the righteous stretch forth their hands to unrighteousness. Unfortunately, when the children of Israel march into that land, they stretch their own hand. The righteous stretch their own hand. The, land, the people of Israel stretch their own hand to unrighteousness. They did worse than what Abba commanded them not to do. They did worse than people who occupied that land. He said, for the scatter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Let the righteous stretch forth their hands to unrighteousness. We have to be guided by Torah. We have to be careful with people we associate ourselves with. They can make us to be unrighteous. When you are working, when you are dealing with unrighteous people, if you are not careful before you know what is happening, you start behaving like them. That's what this portion of the Torah, of the Tehillim was saying. The rod. The rod. Yahuda is a lion called. From the pay, from the prey, you have gone up, my son. He bowed down, he crouched, crouched like a lion, and like a lion who rouses him. The scepter shall not turn aside from Yahuda, nor a lawgiver between his feet. That is Torah, the teaching of Torah, until Shiloh comes that until yahusha comes and to him is the obedient of people let's 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 cleverly examine this this action revealed the character trail similar to the messiah Let's look at Yehuda. We see the call of Kodeshim. Although he showed lapses of holiness, of Kodeshim and good judgment at the time, he saved Yosef. That was Yehuda. I mean, that was Yehuda. Yehuda was a savior. He saved Yosef's life from his brother Rab. After they threw him in a pit, and later Yehuda was the only brother 
willing to enslave himself, his own life, in order to free his brother Benjamin. These actions reveal character traits similar to our Messiah, the one who saved us from our from spiritual death and releases us from the spiritual enslavement. You look at the character trail of Yahuda, and you look at the character trail of Yahusha Hamashiach, you see the similarity there. Yeah, it was Yahusha who saved us from spiritual death and release us, releases us from spiritual enslavement. When we are not sure what to be thankful for, we can praise and thank him for this gift of freedom. When you are not sure of what you, you let's give thanks to Abba. We are walking in darkness. And Yahusha gave us freedom, spiritual freedom. There is a way that seems right unto men, but the end thereof is destructions. At a time in our life, we have walked the walk of destructions, both physical and spiritual. But Yahusha HaMashiach find he located us and bring us back to himself he took away the spiritual enslavement he destroyed the spiritual enslavement and brought us back to himself and that is the power of scepter that is the power of scepter the power of the power that is in it the power of righteousness the power to make lives, the power to preserve life, and the power to make lives. Yahusha told that woman, Mary, I told you, believe me, I am the life. Yahuda, actions, his character trail is similar to that of Yahusha Hamashiach. And we saw how Leah, Yaakov wife, used a play of words in naming her last son, Yahuda, saying that now she would praise, praise Yada, thanks. Yahuwah. Apostle Shaul said that a true Yahudim inwardly is one who praises, who praises or thanks Yahuwah, whether Yahudim or Gentiles. Sister Bola, can you read Romans chapter 2, 28 to 29? Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. 28 to 29. Yes, ma'am. For he is not a Yahudi who is so outwardly, neither is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh, but a Yehudi is he who is so inwardly and circumcision is that of the earth in the spirit no literally whose praise is not from men but of elohim hallelujah Amen. but as Shaul was saying that a true Yahuda inwardly is one who praises Yahuwah. 
whether it is not the circumcision. He's not condemning the circumcision. But he's talking about the hard second, the hard that was circumcised. We saw that Yaakov likened Yehuda also to a lion whip. In Hebrew, it's called God Ariel from the prey. My son, you have gone up. He bowed down. He lies down as a lion and as a lion who shall arouse him. And what is the, 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 the way? A very young animal, such as a young lion, similar to cub, such as a long, young lion, bear, or wolf that is still being fed by his mother. That was what Yaakov likened his son, Yehuda, to. And we, we saw that Yaakov, that from Yehuda, the royal tribe of Yehuda came forth, the kings, all the kings that rule in the land of Israel are from the house of Yehuda. The legislators, those that make uh, 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 law, and the promised redeemer, Mashiach, the anointed king of Israel, Yahusha HaMashiach. All this thing came from the from the from the tribe of Yehuda. The kings, the legislators, the promised redeemer, Yahusha Hamashiach. As it has been promised, when Yahusha comes, his dominion is and his authority will extend to all over the world. And to him, every name shall bow, and every tongue confess that he is king of kings and the master of all masters. Master of all masters. And that can be found in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. And we also saw that when Yahu, when Yahob was um, um prophesying he also talked about the coming messiah he said the scepter shall not depart from yahuda nor a lawgiver between his feet until shiloh comes and to him shall the obedient of the people the shiloh the meaning of the word shiloh as it is used in verse literally means that that is, or he who it is. Let me repeat that again. The meaning of the word Shiloh, as, is, as it is used in this verse, literally means that is he, that is he, that is he, or he who's it. The owner, the authority. That is to say that the Torah will not depart. The scepter. The scepter will not depart that at all from Yahuda until when Yahusha comes and he will take it away from Yahuda. The scholastic will not depart. The Torah will not depart from them. From the royal home. From the from Yahuda. Till when Yahusha comes to take that away. So this, this verse could be restated to say that Skepta, that is staff of a ruler, will not depart from Yehuda until one comes to whom it belongs. The Torah belongs to Yahusha. That is why in John chapter 14 and 15, when he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandment. Let me say it again. This verse could be restated to say that this, the scepter, staff of a ruler, will not depart from Yehuda 
until one comes to whom it belongs. The star, the staff of authority, the stamp of authority, the rod, the staff of, of, of authority that is in the hand of Yahuda now, in our hand now. It is in our hand now. Will not depart from us. The Torah, don't forget that Abba said he will write his Torah in our heart. So that we are, are going, nobody will tell us to obey the commandment, but that we are going to obey the commandment because the Torah has been written in our heart. That is what um, Yaakub was saying, that this Torah is going to be with us. See, when the owner of the Torah, who gave himself, who, who, John chapter 1, Let's go to the book of John chapter 1. Brother Anderson, can you read the book of uh, John chapter 1? Okay, John chapter 1. Yes, sir. One one, yes, chapter one. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. Go ahead again. Go ahead. And the same was in the beginning with Elohim, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was the life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from Elohim whose name was John. And the same. Can you, can you please go to verse 14? Verse 14. 14? Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll read to verse 14 or stop. Yes, read read verse 14. And the read word. Verse 14. Yes. And the word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. And we begotten his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth hallelujah and the word became flesh yahusha became flesh that the torah became flesh and he dwell among us but unfortunately we do not recognize him but he's coming again he's coming again to finally with the rod in his hand to judge the world, to take over the control and exercise absolute authority over the whole world, cleanse the land of Israel. The world became flesh. We say that. Most specifically, Shiloh is considered to be to be synonym for Messiah, even by ancient Yahudim scholars and rabbis who wrote on it. We have seen that the the rulership abided with the tribe of Yahuda. That is the rulership is going to is we abide by the tribe of Yehuda, on the arrival of Shiloh, on the arrival of Messiah, the rulership is going to be abiding. We know today that there's no king in the land of Israel. No one. Not even the imposter can, 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 or put that institution to work. But everywhere the house of Yahuda are, they are kings. They have kings and rulers. And I'm not talking of the the, the royal home of, Brit of, uh, of, uh, of, of London. No, it is a fraud. The British royalty is nothing but fraud. Because 
in verse 12, 49, he said his eyes are darker than wine and his teeth whiter than the milk. It has given us the description of Yahuda. He has given us the description of who Yahuda was. Yeshua held the sovereign staff of Elohim himself, releasing spiritual oppression and setting the captive free through Yahuwah Kodesh, Ruach HaKodesh. We have seen that when Yahusha was in our midst. He was doing good. He was releasing people who are oppressed spiritually. And he was setting the captive free, who are captive by Hashatan, by the devil. We saw how he performed a lot of miracles and set people free. Free. Because the staff of Yahuwah is in his hand. Yahusha came as a suffering servant. Mashiach ben Yosef, a servant of servant. But unfortunately, the Yahudim leadership of, of Yahusha's day, however, were looking for a scepter to be raised by a military leader who will conquer the Roman oppressors with weapons and force, and with weapons and force. Mashiach ben Dawood. They are looking for political leaders because they refuse to 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 be guided by the torah they did not read the torah so they are looking for ben dahud who will come to set them free from the roman emperor so the 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 the, the yahudim institution the leadership did not recognize it And we have seen today that all over the world, Abba is calling Israel, is calling the Yahudim, is awakening them up. Yahusha has stretched forth his rod to awaken his people, to call his people, to draw his people with authority unto them through Ruah HaKodesh. And also we have seen how Yahuda name, as I've said that, further signifying Yahuda prophetic call as Alahim Kodesh was. Yahuda name, Yahuda, uses all four letters, tetramatodragon, of the prophet, uh, sorry, of the proper name of Yahuwah, which with the addition of one Hebrew letter, Dalet, which stands for the Lent or Door, which stands for Door. As I've said that the four letters of Abba actually can be found in the name of Yahuda, And with another one that was added to it, which was Dalet, which is the Door. And Yahusha died in the land of Yahuda on the Roman execution stick, rose again, and he became the door of salvation. Nobody can come to the Father except through Yahusha. Yahusha is the door to the Father. He said that those who came before him are robbers. Those who came before him, that he is the door. You cannot get to the Father without passing through Yahusha. If Yahusha did not open the door, nobody can go to the Father. I am the door. If anyone enter by me, he will be saved. Uh, I will go in and out and find pasture. John 10, 9. If anyone abide in me, I am the door. If anyone enter by me, sorry, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And we go in and out and find pasture. Yahusha is the door. Yahuda, the name, his name, 
carried father's name. Yahuda name carried father's name. That was why the, 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 his name was replaced. Just like the name of the father was, was taken away, the name of Yahusha was taken away. The name of all the, the um, Nabi were taken away and replaced them with satanic names, uninspired names. Yahuda, when you talk about Yahuda, and the, you see, the, the, the Hebrew calling, the, the Jew say Ye, Yehuda. There's nothing like Yehuda. There's no E in Hebrew. There's no E in Hebrew. I'm talking of original Hebrew, not Aramaic Hebrew. There's no E in original. Paleo Hebrew, there's no E there. So, the four letters names of Abba is in Yahuda's name. Your he wo he. Your he u e. Yahuda, Yahuwah. Yahu, Yahuwah. His name is included. And another letter of Hebrew letter, which is the letter, which is the door. I'm the door. Also included in his in his name. In this way, all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion, he will banish on godliness from Yaakov. He will banish Torahlessness from Yaakov. It's wrong to use the word on godliness. There's nothing like that, the word of godliness. He will banish Torahlessness from Yaakov. Let's read Romans 11, 26. Sister Bala, can you read for us Romans 11, 26? Brother Anderson, can you read Isaiah 59, 20? What, no, Isaiah what? 59, 5, 9. 5, five 9. 9, okay, 59. Yes, 20, okay. verse 20, yes. Romans eleven twenty um twenty-nine. Yes. Hold on. Roman, Romans is Roman. The book of Romans, Romans eleven. Twenty-six, verse twenty-six. And so all Israel, all Israel shall be saved, as it has been written. The deliverer shall come out of Zion. And he shall turn away wickedness from Jacob. Yes. I want to read it like this. I want to read it like this. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yes, yes ma'am. This, this is a very correct interpretation. He will turn away the wickedness from Jacob, not on godliness. He will turn away King Jimmy. King Jimmy used the word on godliness. He will turn away, you know, wickedness. He will turn away thoroughness. He will turn away, um, and what is sin? Lawlessness. He will turn away lawlessness from from Yaku. Right. And as we read Isaiah fifty-nine, verse twenty. Verse twenty. Yes, Isaiah five nine two zero. Okay, and the, the Redeemer shall come to Zion and on unto them that turn from transgression in Yaku, saith Yahweh. Say Yahweh, the Redeemer will come to Zion. The Redeemer, who is that Redeemer? Yahusha Hamashiach. I was, we, we saw how. Yaakov, you Yahuda is 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 entirely Torah portion because this is Yahusha. When you are talking about Yahuda, you are talking of Yahusha because he came from the tribe of Yahuda. 
the lion of the tribe, the lion from the tribe of Yehuda, with the rod of righteousness in his hand. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it should be, it should have occupied a Torah portion. And Yaakov also blessed his other children. He pronounced blessing on them, on Yosef, on Zebulon, on Yisakam, and, and, and Dan, and all of them. But our major Torah portion is on, ya on Yehuda, because from Yehuda we come the deliverer of you and me from our tribe, the tribe of Yehuda. The de deliverer we come. We seen that Yaakov specifically told. Yahuda, uh, Yahuda, that the Torah will not depart from you until the owner of the Torah comes. Then you will surrender it when he comes. He will take it away from you. We just thank Abba, you know, for this um, ending of our Torah portion, which is very shit. And I'm, I sincerely believe that we are blessed. We are Baruch with this Torah portion from Genesis one to the ending. I know we are we we really really uh, uh, Baruch with this. So I pray that Abba will help us to continue in His way, and for us to continue in 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 Torah till when Yahusha will appear. So this is the end of, end of uh, Genesis, Bereshit. This is the end of uh, Bereshit. And I pray that Abba will help us to continue to see Yahusha in whatever we are doing and to guide his commandment and live by his word. Kaza, kaza, Nick Hazard, be strong, be strong, and strengthen, and be strengthened. Be strong, be strong, and be strengthened. Um, I yield the floor for questions and contribution. I would say it was a good lesson. I don't have no contributions, but um, it was pretty stable. I have a question. Of yes, direction. Okay. Now we are we only talking about mostly Yehuda. Yes. And uh, I believe that apart from Simon and Levi that were scattered among the twelve. Yes. Um. I'm trying to figure out. What happened to the rest? Where could they be? Um, a lot, the rest of them, because we know that Yehuda and uh, probably the house of Benjamin, they are the one that is in, uh, in Jerusalem, maybe the south or the north, and the remaining parts are the 10 tribes that are together. We really don't know what happened to the ten tribe. I'm just uh I know that I, I'm still taking my baby step. The the rest of us here might have no better than I do, but I'm still in my baby steps and I'm so excited in taking the steps. And you know, but I'm just thinking in my head, where are the rest ten? Uh can we say where I don't know? I'm just thinking about the, the remaining. Yes, thank you. And uh, you remember that when um, when King Solomon turned away from Abba, 
because he married many wives. His heart is not longer again with Abba. And Abba told him that I'm going to divide the kingdom from your hand. But Abba also added that I'm not going to do it in your time. So I'm going to do it, you know, when you go. So when his son took over, when Solomon's son took over, he invited the elders of Israel and he seek counsel on how to govern Israel. And the elder advised him correctly. Then he invited the youth also to seek counsel on how to govern the Israel. And the Israel told him that, look, your father was whipping the children of Israel with one strip of, 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 um, of, 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 of whip. You are to double it. So when they came together, his son actually made that pronouncement. He, he go by the advice of the youths. And the ten tribes said to your tent, Israel. So the, 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 right in there, the kingdom was divided into two. The southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. But the northern kingdom were led astray. They completely completely do away with Allahim of their fathers. They embraced Asherim and all other mighty one deities. So Abba divorced them. So in seven in 776 BCE, Syria marched in and took over. Okay and scattered them all over the world according to the word of Abba. So Abba divorced them. So they they were scattered all over the, 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 the all over the world and they were assimilated to the culture and tradition of the nation that hosted you know them. But that does not mean that Abba has forgotten them completely. And that is what is happening now. The 10 tribe are coming back and the 10 tribe will come back. The house of Israel, the house of Ephraim are coming back. And that is what you have today. So uh, Abba, that was there, yes. Can I say that no tribe is back yet? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean it, yes, no tribe has back to the land, physically to the land. Okay. But Abba are calling the, the house of Israel okay. yes, sir. by reviving the Torah. But, okay. I mean, you can see the knowledge, the knowledge of the Torah now. People are the, the house of Israel from all over the world. You mention everywhere in the world. You know, people are people who are testing to know Abba, to know his way. So and it is only Yahusha that we bring, you know, physically when he appear, he will bring the 10 tribe and even Yahuda. Yahuda are not there. Okay. The Yahuda that are there are the Muslims, those who converted. And they are being oppressed, they are being suppressed. You know, when when the Zionists, when the Jewish Zionists march into the land of Israel. They committed genocide. This never, they didn't, you know, they had, this has never been revealed. They committed genocide. They committed murder against the Yahudim. So they confined them to, to uh, Jordan. Mm. That is why when you go, if you go to Israel today, you go to Jordan, you have people that look like me and you. Wow. Yes. 
if you are if you go to uh i think samaria yes i heard like of samaria if you are, as if as it's like it's like if you are in the in the baltimore mm. or you are in Harlem in in new york in new york mm. you yes. think jericho was a good place to go yeah did you make jericho you if, you, if you had to go to Israel, where would you go? Well, I would prefer to go where my people are. Because you see, when you go on tour to the land of Israel, everything that being shown to you is nothing but false. It is what they describe that it is, that it is. But actually it's not. The tourism is business, simple. The tourism to the land of Israel is purely business. So if I if I go, I will I would like to go to where um the 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 I would like to go to the Jordan. Sorry, I mean I would like to go to Jericho. Because the 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 real Hebrew are confined to Jericho. Even right. when uh, migration of uh, the the I think Yahuda or the Israelite from Ethiopia, they were they were confined to Jericho. That's where you find them. And do you know that the Torah that they give to us is quite different from that of uh, um of uh, of uh, of Ethiopians they have the real Torah with them so I would I would prefer to go to Jordan I mean to uh Jericho to stay in Jericho that's where we prefer to go hallelujah what of you you like to go everywhere you like to go to the Church of Ascension? <laughs> you like to go to where, <laughs> you know, where they call uh, 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 the tomb of yeah Yahusha? It was discovered by um, Constantine's mother, <laughs> oh, a ninety-something years old woman. <laughs> discovered the tomb, discovered the cross, where. They said their JC was crucified. The whole thing was was was. I don't want to even to talk about it. Re replacement, replacement history. That is what you have there. See, Abba has nothing to do with people who are there now. He doesn't have any business with them. They they are they are abominable in his eyes. And he's going to judge. He's going to terribly judge. And I can believe, and I sincerely believe that. I don't know. I may be right or wrong, but my 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 ruach is telling me that there's going to be movement of re Yahuda. There's going to be that movement of re Israel, just like the Zionists took over the land of Israel. There's going to be re people. That time is coming. You see, there's no peace in Jerusalem. There's no peace in the land of Israel. And there will be no peace. There will be no peace in Jerusalem. And what is the name of that land? Jerusalem, the city, the, the city of Shalom, the city of peace. So there will be no peace there until the Prince of Peace arrive. Until when the owner of Scepter, Scepter Yahusha Hamashiach, arrive. But I believe that before his arrival, there's going to be a movement of Yahudin and Israel, people who will really, really attempt to take over their land. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. 
something will 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 you know something will we just either through Ruwa Hakodesh of Abba something we just bring it up and people will start all over the world you see the mass movement you see political agitation you see all kinds of things to the land of Israel then a lot of that secret is going to be coming out I mean secrets are coming out now because have we ever wondered why these people call themselves Israeli? There's difference between Israeli and Israelites. I'm executive of a bank. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. They take their people of a bank and they are the ones who are Who is that? What is that? Can I do plea back in? I'm sorry. So, that time is coming. We are approaching that. I'm, I'm, there is my ruach did not rest in saying that time will come in when the re owner of the land of Israel will move before it would, and that is going to be a very serious escalation in the land of Israel. And Abba will be strengthening his own people. Those who occupy the land will be weakening. Their military power will collapse. Economy will collapse. There's going to be disease. There's going to be sickness. The majority of them will start running away from Israel. That time is coming. It's coming. Because if you look at the awakening, if you look at the awakening now, Everybody is want a testy to know the Torah, to know who are the real people of Israel. The son of Yaakov, the house of Yehuda, Israel. That time is coming. That is why up to this moment, the Israeli government were unable to conquer the Hamas. The Hamas are not ter terrorists. The Hamas are Yehuda. They're not terrorists. They are the local, they are the look, the poor, the children of the poor one who were unable to pay taxes to Umar. Umar was a uh, general of Muhammad court when when Umar marched to Jerusalem he told them you are my brothers I'm not going to kill you but you have to accept Islam if you don't accept Islam I mean we have to tax you if you don't accept Islam you will pay but if you accept Islam you are not going to pay taxes and you know the poor people they are so attached to their land so majority of Yahudi who did not go into exile accepted Islamic religion. That is the basis of the crisis in Israel today. It has nothing to do with anything. But it twisted history and give you false narrative and lie, pure lie. So the time is coming. The awakening is so high now that everybody go to inter. I mean, when you come across people, that time is coming. He said that he allowed the Gentiles to tramp upon Jerusalem, the land of Israel, until the time of Gentiles is fulfilled. And look at the Gentiles that are in that land today. They are doing what they want. They control the government, they control the economy, they control the resources, they control everything in the land that belongs to Abba. But a time is coming when the center of righteousness, the road of righteousness will arise and destroy all the wickednesses of the unrighteous one. And Yahusha we establish his absolute reign in Israel with the rod of righteousness 
in his hand. He's going to sit on the seat on the throne of Dawood forever. Any more contribution or questions? Sister Shadela. I don't really have a contribution. Um, I like how you tied how you how you um, tied in Yahuda and Yahusha. I like how you tied that in. It's, uh, but I don't, I don't really have a contribution. I do have a question though. Yes, go ahead. My question is in regards to Yahuda. Yes. And Tamar. And I often wondered why would Yahuda give Tamar such a valuable uh, thing as such as his 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 ring of authority to someone that was considered to be a prostitute i feel like i'm missing something i feel like it's something a little bit more to that because as a man of authority i just don't understand that that's a valuable that's that was a very valuable thing that he gave a woman that he don't know, just met. It, I, it don't make sense to me because I don't have enough information, obviously. So I have that question. Why would he do such a thing? Do you know? You know, hmm. I look at it from this angle. Um when men want something from a woman from a, from from woman they are desperate and they can do anything mm. i guess at that particular point in time he doesn't even value it. his reality he does not value his reality he does not even know know the meaning of that rod that is in his hand he has no idea that he's, he has, he's giving away his authority to Tama. Mm -hmm. I thought the, the same thing. You see, but, oh. but, but Shadola, you must realize that Tama knew the symbol of that authority in his hand because he demanded she, it. I yeah? know she did. I know yes. Tamar. Tamar is not in question. She's a brilliant woman. She yes. was brilliant for what she did. She's not in question. My question, because my thought, um, when I was when as as we were going over this portion concerning Yahuda, my mind went back there, and I said to myself, "This man, in that at that particular time, in the position he was in, did not value what he had." that he would just hand that over to a woman that he don't even know. I mean, yeah, he wanted something, get it. Okay. But that 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 right there that that was so valuable. This woman could take and do do anything she wanted with his authority. And I was like, you know, so that was my thought about it. You just yes, you see, at that at that particular point in time. At that particular point in time, Yahuda was not thinking. Mm -hmm. He wasn't thinking at all. Mm -hmm. Two, he does not know the the uh, significance of what was in his hand. Mm -hmm. He has no mm -hmm. idea of what that staff that is mm -hmm. in his hand. He was not, at, don't forget, At that particular point in time in his life, the Ruach was not present with him. 
-hmm. Yes. Be because if you if you if you look closely to you know the Yaakov from their father, even up to the Yahuda, uh, uh, um, up to the Yahuda, you will discover that their pronouncement, their steps, sometimes are guarded by the Ruach Hakodesh. But mm -hmm. here, Yahuda was not guided. Mm -hmm. He was not guided by the Torah because if mm -hmm. if he was guided by the Torah, he wouldn't have done what he did. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So he did not. He wasn't guided by the commandment of the Torah when he met a man. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to do what he wanted to do. He just mm -hmm. desperate to get into Tama. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. But then don't forget that Tama, I brought in Tama. I know it was not the question was about her, but I brought in Tama because Tama was a strong presence in his yeah. family, in his house. Yeah. So Tama knew. <laughs> what is in the in 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 uh, her father in law's hand? Mm -hmm. The owner of the 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 road, the owner of this I mean the owner of the stand that is in his hand does not even does not have even idea mm -hmm. of what he's giving away. He doesn't know that he he is giving away his authority to Tama. Mm -hmm. And and if you look at if you if you if you advance on this argument, you will also discover that the children of Tama, mm -hmm. because he gave that stuff to Tama, you trace you trace the Messiah DNA right in from the children of Tama. Yes. That staff does not lost in the hands of Tama's children. So when you when you when you go to when you when you when you read Matiyahu chapter one, you see the genealogy of Yahusha Mashiach. You know right from Abraham up to Yahuda, then to the children of Tamar. Yeah. And Tamar, these boys were not only the children of uh, of, yeah, of Yahuda. Yahuda yeah. do have, I think, five or six boys. But because the staff of authority has been given to their mom, mm. <laughs> you know, unknown to even Yahuda. Mm -hmm. Because he never restored that staff back to him. He only showed him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he only show, he, she did not give it back to him. He only showed it to him. Now you gave me this. But mm -hmm. at the same time, that did not erode it, the plan of Abba mm -hmm. in Yahuda's life. Well, I don't think it was necessarily a bad a bad thing that happened um, in Yahuda's life. I guess it's per about perception, because when I think about Tamar, it never, you know, really said that she uh, was a um, a wayward woman. I mean, basically, she was done wrongly. She was married to one of his sons that died, and then she was married to their brothers, and they didn't do well by her. And then she was promised, you know, the son once he grew up to. So she she really stood her position and kept herself well. And I feel like was given wisdom to do what she did. I don't think that she necessarily she she that was that was wisdom. Not all women can really think on those lines to do something um, from that angle. And in in my mind, just my own perceptions. This is mine. This is not law. This is not. But this is just how I think about it. Um, just from that whole situation, I feel like she still got honored. Okay, she 
in in the midst of Yahuda's mischief. Because because if you read like if you read the twelve patriarchs, if you've ever read that book, there's a section where there's Yehuda. He's talking to you know his sons and he's telling them what not to do. And one of the things he's like, stay away yes, from yes, the wine. Yes. You know what I mean? We are going we are going, we are going to study that. <laughs> also. The wine. So he learned from that situation, obviously. But I still feel like that. Um, when we make certain decisions, um, whether they are off the path or on the path of Abba, Abba is in control of all things. And you can't say which way he can, you know, stir you, even if you get off. So anyway, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. Thank you for answering my question. I appreciate it. Sister Bola has her hand up. Go ahead, Sister Bola, ask your question or give your comment, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Uh, thank you. I'm just thinking that uh, special people like Yehuda patronizing supposed pro prostitute because <laughs> He the he, he, intention is to just sleep with a prostitute and go away. He never thought it could be somebody that's watching him. And I'm so shocked and surprised that people can get so careless. Not only that, intended to sleep with her because she's just a street woman or woman that is given herself for money. She he, he Yahuda is also comfortable in giving his uh, rod for a down payment that okay when I uh I will later come and pay and get that back. You as you all have said he wasn't thinking and he just I'm just imagining how some people can just be loose like that way. And I believe he has a wife. The woman that he married is still there, only that you travel somewhere with a friend. Probably the friend influenced him. I don't know as well. But I was just thinking and imagining that, wow, what could be wrong with this guy? Is he that loose? Is he careless? Is he not? Oh, wow. I'm just looking into his life. And I'm imagining something like that. Also, I see the lady, like we talked yesterday, that like we said yesterday, he was unloved. He, she loved the first husband. His real husband died. And the brother to the husband were not treating her very well. It's so bad that a man we get to a woman and to that extent you you will treat her that way when the woman is expecting to to be at home to raise a child and it shows that she was as well not loved. But Haba honored her by granting her such wisdom, blessing her with two boys making her to be the lineage of our savior, you know? I think when we are not loved by men, it's very painful as human being, but we are definitely going to be loved by Almighty. You know, that's just giving me a kind of encouragement. So if we are not really loved, we should find, uh, we should draw strength from our creator. He loves us more. And uh, whenever we are feeling unloved, we should just draw strength from him. Um, I learned a lot from tonight's teaching. Amen. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Then I think uh, also um, Yahuda lost first son and the second son. I think he was afraid. 
that what happened to his two boys may happen to his dead uh, son. So that was why he was just being scared. That was why he did not actually uh, uh, wanting uh, uh, his uh, boy to marry Tamar. But I think there's also a dishonest in the part of Yahuda. And it should have been very straightforward to that woman and say, listen, you know, um, I, I will not give my son to you. You know, I release you. He should have told her that we are released. You. Go and marry, you know. So that woman was in a state of confusion. It's not that it wasn't, it just was a state of confusion. I doesn't know what to do. Because he, she has planted her feet in the house of Yahuda already. He knew Yahuda has the authority. He knew Yahuda has the rod. He knew Yahuda would be the leader of the tribe of Israel. So he doesn't, she doesn't want to leave that family. And she feel the best bet for how to put her leg in that family is to do what she did. To me, we may, we may, we may, you know, some people may judge her, but I'm not, I'm not because you know when you when you when you like every discernible woman when you come across a man that you know he has the stuff and that abba is with that man you want to be with that man you want to be in that family it's not really about the resources but this is the house of elohim she doesn't want to leave that house. So I think that is why she did what she did. And Abba honor her. Abba honor her. Abba did not see her wrong day. You remember that Yahuda even admitted that she was righteous than him. Yahuda said that. <laughs> that, that. That means that she followed Torah better than he did. That's what Yahuda, Yahuda, uh, Yahuda was saying to her. To her. So um, we really, it's, it's really, really a life lesson that I know we, Abba actually, you know, speak to us in this very shit. And we are looking forward to um, um, Shemot, Nez Shabbat. So we thank Abba this night and the Abba Baruch, all of us, and we have a wonderful night. Um, Sister Bola, pray for us, please. Closing prayer. Yes, sir. Our Father, Yahuwah, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to learn of you. Yes. Thank you to eat and to digest your word. Yes, brother. Thank you for the understanding and the eye opener that you are giving unto us. Yes, Father. It's not by our power, it's not by our strength. Yes. Is the mercy that draw us close. Yes, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Those who were, we started together, some are still not knowing the right thing. They are still sleep deep. Mm -hmm. Some are in delusion. Some could not even understand what we are seeing. I've seen so many friends that I say, oh, this thing is like this. It's not like this. And they don't really get what I am talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't even understand it. They can't even get the clue that I was once there. But you brought me closer. Thank you. My brothers and my sister, you draw us closer to you. Yes, Father. We are very grateful. 
Yes, Abba. We are thankful. Yes, Abba. We appreciate this understanding that you granted unto us. Yes. Abba, thank you. Thank you. We plead and we pray that you will continue to open our eyes. Yes. You have so much excited me. I've been so much happy enjoying your present, your the understanding, the eye openings, and all of that. Each time you just let the your joy bubble from the deep down of my heart, of my of, of inside of me out, and I'm like, I couldn't hold it. I will call my husband who is not even seen like, like, look, I don't understand what you are talking. I don't know the kind of faith that you are embracing. I'm like, I'm just happy. I can't just hold it. I can't just contain it. I need to share it. Daddy, wow. Wow. To you be all the glory. Thank you. Thank you. You be all the honor. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for as many of our house old member that you are drawing closer and closer to you. I yes. want to thank you for my sister Shadola's children. You are doing awesome, awesome things in their life. Yes. I want to thank you for the family of our uh, brother Ola, family of brother Anderson, and all of us even our sister that is not here tonight. We all have a praise, praise report. Thank you for all other Israelites that are scattered abroad, all over. Baba, as you have promised, continue to open their eyes. Yes. I've had so many people. I'm like, wow. People are coming to the knowledge of truth. People are coming to get see this. Oh, wow, where am I? So many things I come across people who have been in Torah for years. I'll be like, Father, where am I? Why did I not hear? But let it please you, Baba. Yes. To draw more of our family members. Yes. To draw more of our friends. Yes. To draw more of people in our in our community. Yes. To so this understanding of you. Yes. Baba, do it to the glory and honor of your name. Yes. Draw more of our children that are yet to truly know you. Some are just burying their head in the church, going every day, no rest. They will pray and pray and pray as if they are praying to, 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 to a dead, dead God. But we know you as Yah. Yahweh, yes. to you be all the praise. To you be all the adoration. Yes. Hold us more. Yes. Shed your light on our way. Yes. Grant us wisdom in your Torah. Yes. More knowledge. How about we praise you? Yes, we Father. For our brother, all are you we refill him. Yes, you Father, thank you. Equip him. Yes. You will bless him. Amen. You will visit him as well. Amen. That his labor to study and to prepare will not be in vain. Amen. We will bless him in return. Yes. Sir. And all his efforts. Yes. Baba, you will cause it to yield. Yes. Father. Great blessing. Not yes. only to us in this group. Yes. But to many who we hear is after. Yes. Yes, Father. Thank you for all the plans that we have. Thank you, Father. For days and months and years to come. Yes. We can plan, but you will bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. We trust you that you will bring to pass all our heart desire. You will yes. bring to pass all the plans that have been laid out and given unto you. Thank you, Abba. Thank you. We give you praise. You will yeah. always giving us praise reports, yeah. gladdens our hearts. Yes. Order our steps. Yes. Cause blessings to come unto us. Yes. You will let everything work for our good. 
Yes. And you will give us many more testimonies. Yes, Father. In Yahusha's Amashiach, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes.